Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matter with the Toasty Bros. And today we have a $450 mini ITX gaming PC that is in such a cool, unique case. And really the whole build is super unique. It's using a great combo that I found on our favorite website, AliExpress. Very excited to put this thing together. Before we dive into this build, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Team Group and their Delta RGB DDR5 memory, featuring blazing fast speeds up to 6,400 megahertz, support for Intel XMP 3.0, a built-in PMIC with a stronger cooling design, making it perfect for your next 12th gen Intel gaming PC. Also be sure to check out Team Group's website to learn more about how their products impact different industries like commercial, education, and more. Storage needs are growing and Team Group has all the products to fulfill those needs. Also, you can sign up for 10% off their products on Amazon by going to their website and filling out your email information. Special thanks again to Team Group for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into it, shall we? All right, so this build, like we said, is pretty unique. We're gonna go over all the parts in just a second, but basically Matt had bought this board off of AliExpress. It was a CPU, motherboard, and RAM combo. It's mini ITX form factor. And so he said, Jackson, make a build. And I said, all right, we gotta go mini ITX with it then. We found this really unique all aluminum case. So we decided to go mini ITX with it, but still keep it nice and budget for you guys. So let's just not waste any more time and dive into each individual part and how it makes up this PC build. <laughs> all right, guys, so for the motherboard here, we have this genuine. I think that's how you say it, Gen Genui. Genuine. <laughs> I don't know, but it's a, a mini ITX board that actually looks really cool. I think it's one of the main reasons we got this yes. is I think just aesthetic wise, this looked really nice. So it's actually pretty good though for the price. We paid, you know, just, just a tad over hundred bucks and we get this very nice mini ITX motherboard that's actually a B85 ITX board. So it's LGA 1150, but it has a Xeon processor in it. And the specific processor is the E3 1220 V3, which is a four core, four thread. You could actually upgrade this too. There is like some four core eight threads, some six core 12 thread and so on. Another cool thing about this board that we liked is it actually has an M.2 slot. So we don't really know for sure if it's NVMe or not. We think it's just a normal M.2. So we're kind of risking it because we got an NVMe SSD, but hopefully it'll go backwards compatible with it. And for the RAM, we have these two SK Hynix sticks that are actually unbranded as far as the stickers go. But if you look at the ICs, it actually is name brand and it's 16 gigs. So two eight gig sticks. Um, and all inside of this beautiful board. One thing we will have to do that we can't forget is adding this little CMOS battery because anytime you order from overseas, they typically take them out. And speaking of the SSD, we have this Team Group MP33 512. Like we said, this is an NVMe SSD because actually finding normal M.2 SATA standards is actually a little bit harder now because these are so cheap. So around $44 for this, and also they have Silicon Power, there's Clev, there's Kingston, there's a lot of brands out there that are around the same price, and it should just plop right in there and hopefully work. We've had this sitting on the shelf for quite some time. I think they might've actually sent this over to us, but this is the Shuriken 2 and it is a scythe cooler. And it's actually a really awesome looking cooler that we just really didn't know what to use it for, but it just so happens to support this socket. I mean, check this thing out. It actually is a low profile cooler, but all aluminum, really big heat sink with really nice heat pipes and what looks like a low profile 90 millimeter fan. I mean, look at that, it's gonna fit perfect. It won't have a whole lot of head clearance inside this case, which does have enough room for full-size cooler, but you know, we needed to use this. Now for the graphics card, you might uh, know this graphics card. This is actually the GTX 950 that we used in our 950 benchmark video. If you haven't seen that video, hit the I in the top right corner. Blah, almost tripped over my words there. But it has this uh, vinyl wrap on it that the seller we bought it from on eBay already came with, and it kind of makes sense. It's a white card, it'll match our motherboard. We kind of got a theme going on here, so you know we're gonna stick with it. In terms of the power supply, which we have right here. This is good old Aries game, AGV 500. This is a budget build, really don't need a super high-end power supply for it, and we wanted to save some money by going this route, and we do love these power supplies for these budget builds. And in terms of the case that looks really cool over here, and we will be adding some RGB to it, is the Metallic Gear, Metallic Gear Neo Mini. It's a kind of a mouthful, but yeah, it has a bunch of metal all over, because Metallic Gear, of course, it has to have metal on it, and it looks really, really clean, and there is room for some RGB fans. So yeah, we're going a little crazy in terms of the specs on the case, but we really Really wanted to use this case and we're gonna make it look super nice and I think $450 is a fair price for the build like this in this current market so let's not waste any more time and put it together.
Alright gamers, now that we have this PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about those benchmarks real quick. Now we decided to this PC in a few titles, those being Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. If you want to see more extended benchmark coverage of this system or similar numbers on the GTX 950, definitely check out our benchmarking video on the 950 that is on the channel so you can see how well the 950 actually performs. So yeah, I'm in the top right corner. But first up in Fortnite at 1080p on Epic View Distance, everything else on low. We got 100 plus FPS, but there were definitely some stutters. That E3 1220v3 is only a quad core, therefore you're gonna have some issues in some games that are more thread dependent. At least a 4 core 8 thread is gonna make a much smoother experience, so upgrading to a higher end Xeon on this platform or a better i7 might be a good option in the future, but again, that's the future, you do have that option, and this build overall is only $450, and considering the small form factor and all the RGB that's included, that you most certainly could cut out to save some money and make this more like a $400 or $380 PC, you really have a lot of wiggle room to make this thing better in the future. But that GTX 950 can definitely handle most games, and as you can see in Apex Legends on all those settings at 1080p, we average 60 to 70 FPS. Yes, the card retails for about $100, but occasionally you can snipe it for about 80 to 90, and at that price point, I think it's a good budget card for esports titles. You're not really going to be doing much more than esports titles, as you'll see in our benchmark video with the 950, but that's what you're looking for in a placeholder option at around 100 bucks right now. I really think this thing should be valued more like 50 or $40, but you know, the market it. we live in right now we have to try to get the best that we can and i think a hundred dollars is decently fair compared to how everything else is priced in the market and the last game we decided to test was Shadow the Tomb Raider at 1080p on low settings, and we ended up averaging 40 FPS. As you can tell, esports titles have no problem whatsoever running on this PC, but when you dive into those AAA titles, you're going to start having some issues. You're probably looking at 720p for a good gaming experience, or 1600x900. You could pick up a cheap 1600x900 monitor like we have in the past for some of our budget PCs and get uh, better frame rates overall while not sacrificing on visual quality too much, and you'll be able to get that constant 60 FPS that you're looking for but yeah this is just kind of a cool little idea of a build that I basically planned from something I found on AliExpress and I was able to just use the CPU it came with the RAM it came with and slapped it in the system and I think that board looks really cool it's not the most practical thing in the world but if you get it for a really good price and this is an only option that you can get in another country I would recommend you consider this for your next gaming PC build so that'll be finished the benchmarking section of today's video I want to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick all right guys, so not only did this build turn out to look really nice and nice and compact as well, but it also plays games as you probably would have expected. We do have an overall really good build for the price here that we are pretty proud of. So if you want to pick up any parts from today's video, links in the description down below, be affiliate links and it does help us out. And uh, yeah, it was kind of fun building in this case. I think we probably will do it again because it looks really nice. Let us know down below if there's any specific... Blah, blah. Let us know down below if there's any particular cases you want to see next here on the Toasty Bros channel. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other T YouTube channels and also our twice.tv slash Toasty Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. So this specific PC right here will actually be for sale at our PC selling business along with many other laptops, tablets, and computers. PC Bros. Tag, we sell really high-end gaming PCs, budget gaming PCs, and everything in between. So check out our website or come in person. PC Bros. Tag. See you guys later. Goodbye.